I'm very thankful to be supported by FDRS and the Lipedema Foundation, along with the LEARN um, Society. And so today I'm discussing the first results from our past year of studying lipedema subjects with MRI. The clinical problem that our research seeks to address is to develop a diagnostic tool that can measure lipedema at the tissue level that would be different and a, a um, different feature from obesity or lymphedema. And this is a critical and fundamental problem as without a diagnostic tool, we cannot educate the public or medical physicians about lipedema, nor can we establish how prevalent the disease is itself if we can't even measure it or define it. And so this is the goal of our team at Vanderbilt. We think that addressing this problem requires multiple expertise. So we're very fortunate to have interest in lipedema from a wide variety of disciplines. Myself, I am in the Imaging Institute, and I work with sodium and lymphatic imaging with our, um, my advisor, Manis Donahue, and our collaborator in lymphatic physiology, Jens Teitz, and his um, coworker, Adriana Martone. And then we also have key clinical collaborators in the lymphedema therapy clinic, Paula Donahue, and in vascular medicine, Dr. Josh Beckman. First of all, we know clinically that lymphedema can also be accompanied by lymphedema, especially in more advanced stages. And the first, one of the first research papers to show this at the tissue level was a, an, em, an imaging study looking at lymphatic vessels and how permeable they are and how enlarged they are in lipedema subjects, in particular lipolymphedema subjects. So we know that, this, that the lymphatics are involved. And then in terms of basic lymphatic biology and physiology, we know that lymphatics both transport and metabolize fatty acids and require fatty acids for lymphatic endothelial cell metabolism. We also know that the lymphatics are involved in clearance of sodium and in regulation of interstitial tissue volume based on osmotic gradients and the amount of osmolites in the tissue. And so this is where sodium comes into play in the basic physiology of the lymphatics. And those uh, research articles are highlighted in green here. So our, our postulate then was that if the lymphatics are involved, then potentially fatty acids and sodium will accumulate in the tissue. And we see at least the fat portion externally, we can see that and we've tried to characterize that. But it really requires this molecular imaging technique to understand this basic um, content of sodium in the tissue. I wanted to show you what conventional MRI can provide for lipedema. And these are high resolution images moving from the lower ankle, I'll go back again moving from the ankle up towards the knee. And on the left, I'm showing an image that is sensitive to fluid or edema, so the pixels in white are showing fluid. On the right, the image is sensitive to adipose or fat tissue, so the white pixels are more fatty tissue. And these are high-resolution images, and, and this is great. This is what conventional anatomical imaging can provide you. We also have the capability of measuring sodium with MRI. And so we, our hypothesis is based around measuring sodium and fat content in subjects with lipedema, and initially to compare them with females who are tightly controlled for BMI and a similar calf circumference and age. And so I'll show you the, the results then of this comparison um, in these two groups. So here is the outline of our study. We have 10 patients that were enrolled with a diagnosis of lipedema, and I'll show you our inclusion criteria next. We have 12 controls that were tightly matched for both gender, age, their BMI, their race, and their calf circumference. We applied a clinical imaging protocol that included both quantitative sodium imaging and this Dixon method for measuring fat and water content. And we analyzed um, the sodium and fat content statistically and compared the significance at a p-value of 0.05. Our inclusion criteria is just outlined here. We had primary criteria that must be met and at least two, one of the following secondary criteria that, that must have been met to be a part of our study, in addition to a second opinion from a physician. Here's the method of the imaging protocol, just to, to give you a concept of what's involved for the, with a measurement of sodium in the tissue. So on the left side of the image, we're imaging at the mid-calf region. You can see that in the orange band. The green lines are outlining where the slice is placed, and that's below the calf. And you see those, um, those white vials that are placed below the calf. And these are standards of sodium concentration in an um, aqueous solution in the physiologic range. So 10 to 40 millimolar of sodium in these um, standards are placed below the calf in order to correlate 
the signal intensity in the image that we acquire with a quantitative measure of sodium. We've quantified this in the different regions outlined in the skin, in the subcutaneous region, which is highlighted in green, and in blue in the muscle region. And we've excluded the bone and any large blood vessels from these regions. The second measurement that we've acquired with the MRI is a fat content measurement, or a relative fat fraction in the tissue. And so we've acquired a, a fat sensitive image, and we've segmented just the um, fat pixels, which are shown here in green. And then the other pixels that have more primarily water content are segmented and shown in blue. And by taking the ratio of the number of pixels in each of these regions, we can acquire a relative content of fat compared to the total tissue volume. Two groups were tightly matched for the following demographics with no statistical significant difference between any of these uh, demographic features in our cohorts. So here's some, some of the group level results. On the left side, I'm showing you the quantitative skin sodium content. The second uh, portion of the graph is the subcutaneous adipose tissue. In the white boxes are the lipedema subjects and the, at the group level, and in the gray boxes are the control group level results. And we found a significant difference in sodium content in the skin and the adipose tissue. For in terms of the fat fraction in, in the two groups, the lipedema subjects had a larger relative amount of fatty tissue in the calf, mus in the calf itself, and uh, this was relative to a BMI matched and similar calf circumference group, so that's interesting as well. And that was a significant difference. What's probably more relevant is to show you the actual images from a subject. So this is an early stage subject at stage one, and you can see a relative low BMI compared to a female control with similar BMI and calf circumference. The sensitive image to fatty tissue and the quantification underneath. So we have 10 points higher in this subject in terms of how much fatty tissue is measured in the image. But when you look at the sodium image, you can also appreciate a stronger um, appearance of high values shown in, in um, the yellows and the, and the reds, the more warmer colors are higher values of sodium content in the tissue. And you can appreciate that throughout the muscle. But in particular, the skin region, you see a band of higher, higher blue values, I don't have a pointer here, um, showing the band of, of higher sodium around the skin itself, as well as right around the muscle, the paramuscular region. We also sometimes see lesions of edema around that region that are showing high sodium content. And in the adipose tissue itself, we measure higher sodium content compared to BMI match subjects. The um, different ways that salt can go um, can enter into the tissue. It's not just that you may be eating more salt, but it could be related to an endocrine disorder, cause more sodium to be in the tissue based on storage. It also could be reduced sodium clearance that could be happening in these subjects based on impaired lymphatics. So here's the concept shown there. Sodium appears to be a hallmark of several other vascular conditions, so I just wanted to highlight that for you and share that we really need to understand a combination of diagnostic measurements, and I think that the value of sodium and fat uh, fraction measurement is um, something that the MRI can provide as a multimodal technique. This is a preliminary study in only 10 subjects. And so this, um, our next goal is to compare lipedema subjects with the females with lymphedema in the legs, and that would be, we think, valuable to understand how sodium uh, measures up against lymphedema subjects. And I'll just thank our um, collaborators as well. And thank you. Thank you.